In this two-part series, I will reveal what the false prophet will do when he arrives, what the false prophet will wear, and where the false prophet will live. I will also confirm that the ultimate false prophet will present himself as the second Elijah who is still to come, the one who will force the whole world to worship the Antichrist, also known as the beast. The previously unknown information on the false prophet was revealed by the Lord Jesus Christ through a parable that he spoke concerning John the Baptist, as I will explain in the second video of this series. The following is the passage which provides secret details about the false prophet who is soon to come. Luke 7, verses 24 to 26, I read, After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. A lot of Bible scholars and commentators have struggled to understand why Jesus found it necessary to ask the crowd a series of rhetorical questions concerning John the Baptist. In fact, the words of the Lord Jesus are also repeated in the book of Matthew because Jesus was giving a prophecy not about John the Baptist, but about the false prophet who is still to come. I will explain this mystery in the second video of this series. The Lord Jesus Christ, who alone knows all things, made it clear that the second Elijah had already come. This tells us that anyone who will come along before the return of Christ and who will claim to be the second Elijah is to be rejected because he will be the false prophet. I will quote the very words of the Lord Jesus on this important issue. Matthew 17, verse 10 to 13, I read, The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. The above passage informs us that John the Baptist was the second Elijah who was to come. The coming of this second Elijah was foretold by the prophet Malachi, who wrote as follows. Malachi 4, verses 4 to 5, I read, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Before John the Baptist was born, the angel Gabriel came to John's father and confirmed that the child who would be born to him and his wife Elizabeth would fulfill Malachi's prophecy because he would turn the hearts of the parents to their children, as the book of Malachi indicates. Luke 1 verses 13 to 17, I read but the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. 
he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Because the Lord Jesus knew that a lot of people would not believe that the second Elijah had already come, he provided another scripture to confirm what he said about the second Elijah. Here is further confirmation that the second Elijah, the one written about in the book of Malachi, is not coming in the future because he has already come as John the Baptist. Matthew 11, verse 11 to 15, I read, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. As the scripture clearly indicates, only those people who are willing to accept what Jesus said and who have spiritual ears to hear will believe that the second Elijah has already come as John the Baptist. Because Jesus is merciful and loving, he has given us some advanced information that is meant to help us to positively identify the false prophet who will claim to be the second Elijah, as I will review in the second video of this series. Since the false prophet is so critical for end-time events, it is extremely important for Christians to know as much as they can about this wicked individual in order to avoid being deceived like the rest of the world. This is because the false prophet will perform amazing miracles that most people, including God's faithful Christians, will find hard to ignore or to reject. I will quote from the great prophet Moses, who also spoke about the false prophet and his amazing miracles. Deuteronomy 13 verses 1 to 4, I read, if a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or wonder, and if the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. I will also quote from the book of Revelation where the activities of the false prophet, also known as the second beast, the one who comes from the earth, are also described. Revelation 13 verses 13 to 14 I read. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire, to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. The scripture tells us, 
that the false prophet will perform amazing miracles, which include calling down fire from heaven in public view, just as the prophet Elijah did on Mount Carmel. Because of the great miracles which the false prophet will perform on behalf of the Antichrist or the first beast, he will convince the whole world to follow the Antichrist, whom he will present as the true Christ. This should not be surprising because the prophet Elijah did the same thing, calling down fire from heaven and telling everyone to worship his God, whom he presented as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, who is, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ and the true Messiah. 1 Kings 18, verses 36 to 37, I read. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. As the next passage we will reveal, after Elijah successfully called down fire from heaven, he then commanded the people of Israel to kill all the prophets who did not believe in his God, the same God who had just caused fire to come down from heaven in response to Elijah's prayer. 1 Kings 18, verses 38 to 41, I read, Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. The false prophet will do the same thing, calling down fire from heaven and causing all those who will refuse to worship his God, who is the devil and the ultimate antichrist, to be killed. I will quote from the book of Revelation, so you can see how Elijah's actions will be repeated by the false prophet, also known as the second beast. Revelation 13, verse 15, I read, The second beast was given power, to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. So then, since the false prophet will do what the true prophet Elijah did, what is it that will distinguish these two prophets from each other and help the true believers to know for certain that the one who will call down fire from heaven at the end of time is not a prophet of the true God. This is where the words of the Lord Jesus come in to help us to identify the false prophet because of three things which the false prophet will do, which both Elijah and John the Baptist never did. Here is the parable which Jesus gave concerning the false prophet who is coming soon as the second Elijah. Luke 7 verses 24 to 26, I read, After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, 
I tell you, and more than a prophet. As I stated at the beginning of this video, a lot of Bible scholars and commentators have struggled to understand why Jesus spoke the words he spoke about John the Baptist. But the passage begins to make sense when you understand that Jesus was giving a prophecy not about John the Baptist, who was the second Elijah, but about the false prophet who will present himself as the second Elijah when he appears to lead the whole world to follow the Antichrist. I will explain what Jesus meant in the second video of this series. Such are the mysteries of God's holy word.